In the first letter to Philemon, Paul does not write of an Isthmus moving confession or of heartbreaking repentance found in Pliny's letter. Rather, he reminds Philemon of his relationship with God and the importance of accepting an Isthmus back, not as a slave, but as a brother and fellow believer. Paul, prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved and fellow worker. I beseech thee for my son, whom I have begotten in my bonds, Onesimus. Perhaps he was parted from thee for a season, that thou shouldst have him forever. No longer as a servant, but as a brother beloved. If then thou countest me a partner, receive him as myself. But if he hath wronged thee at all, or oweth thee aught, put that to my account. I write unto thee, knowing that thou wilt do even beyond what I say. Despite the content of the letter being very serious, it's also very light in its tone. Paul makes a pun. Anismus means useful. And Paul writes that formerly, useful was useless. But now that he's a Christian, he is both useful to both of us. Paul's second letter, written at the same time, was written to the church at Colossae. At the end of the letter, he changes the subject matter and deals with the difficult relationship between slaves and owners. He needs to address the possible threat of more slaves considering running away, so he writes. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. He goes on to say, Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. To emphasize this message throughout the whole church, Paul cuts and pastes this passage, particularly we find it in the letter to the Ephesians. Onesimus was terrified traveling back to Colossae. He was entrusting his life to a few words scratched onto a piece of paper. Upon his arrival, many of the community were firstly surprised he wasn't in chains and then angry about his departure. Gotten in my bonds, Onesimus. Perhaps he was parted from thee for a season that thou shouldst have him forever, no longer as a servant, but a brother beloved. If then thou countest me a partner, receive him as myself. Forgive thy servant, forbid him not to serve thee. Oh, thou knowest I forgive thee. So what happened to Onesimus?
40 years after Paul's letter to Philemon, Ignatius, the Bishop of Antioch, was being taken to Rome for trial to be executed for being a Christian. As he was passing through Asia Minor, he was greeted at Smyrna by Bishop Onesimus and other church members from Ephesus. He wrote to the church, I received therefore some members of your congregation led by Onesimus, a man of inexpressible love and your bishop. I pray that you by Jesus Christ would all love and seek to be like him. In his letter, Ignatius, like Paul, makes a great deal of the meaning of Onesimus' name, using the very same pun, in many ways reflecting the humour of Paul's letter to Philemon. According to tradition, Philemon releases Onesimus from his service and sends him to work with Paul in Ephesus. Paul would eventually leave Ephesus and later stand trial in Rome. Well after Paul's death, Onesimus would rise to the position, as we've heard, bishop, but now bishop in Ephesus, and his faith would be tested one more time. Christian persecution would increase from the middle of the first century for the next 200 years. Like many Christians in the first and second century, Onesimus' faith had been put to the ultimate test. Tradition says that he was arrested and martyred for belonging to Jesus Christ. This amazing story is so important. Important enough that the early Christian church included this very short letter of Paul to Philemon in the Christian canon and now in our Bibles. Paul's letter to the church at Colossae and the surrounding area would also be included. Together, these letters would help shape Christian thinking on the importance of all people before God and the centrality of Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. The power of this short little letter has reverberated throughout history. It's influenced many people who've read it. It's reminded us of the equal importance of all people before God. It tells us of the need to forgive each other. And perhaps fundamentally, that's the centrality of Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour.